Hey everybody, Adam Savage here with another One Day Build from a new location. Yes, I am in uh, a, a new car, a, uh, a, a car built for a road trip. Yes, and I'm setting out on the road uh, and one of my passengers will be my amazing dog, Maggie. And uh, I need to outfit this car to be a little more Maggie Friendly. That is today's one day build. Um, if you can see behind me, you can see that there is a, uh, that the rear passenger side seat is folded down. That flat top will be Maggie's domain within the car, but, um, it's not very comfortable for a dog right now. So I'm going to build a platform that uh, equalizes and makes level Maggie's domain and gives her access to come over here and say hi, tell her she likes to perch on the console and kiss me in the ear, especially when I'm driving. So that's today's one day build. We're gonna make Maggie a safe and comfortable place for road tripping in my car. Uh, first things first are for me to uh, measure out how big this platform needs to be. And also, as you can see, it's not perfectly level. And I don't think dogs like that any more than humans do. So I'm going to make it a, a level top and I've brought with me a uh, nice big level in order to make that work. So it's time to make some notes uh, and come up with an actual plan. All right, time to make a pattern and see if the pattern actually fits the seat. But before that, I have a story. Uh, in high school, in my sophomore year in high school, uh, the teacher, Miss Masumian, gave us an assignment to build something out of corrugated cardboard and only corrugated cardboard. And I got really excited about this. This is one of the very first art projects I got given that included a specific and significant limitation. And I found the limitation intoxicating. I, oh my God, I was so excited about this. And I told it to my dad, I said, that's the assignment. And my dad said, oh, you gotta make something out of corrugated cardboard, come with me. And we got into his pickup truck and we drove to the art store in White Plains, New York. And he introduced me to the fact that you can buy corrugated cardboard at the art store. I thought it just came in boxes. I thought you had to cut it out of refrigerator boxes. I had no idea you could buy pristine, beautiful sheets of cardboard from the art store. And so let me introduce you to my friend. Oh, look at this. Look at this vast, beautiful plane of corrugated cardboard. Look and gaze upon its unbroken expanse. Oh, there's so much possibility here. Plus the stuff I bought on uh, Amazon has a it's double layered. So it's actually really, really fat. I am gonna use this for mocking up some furniture projects I wanna do later on this year. But right now it is going to be the, plat the pattern on which I make sure that the dog bed I make for my car can actually fit in the car. Yeah, go to the art store, get some beautiful cardboard. I have made some notes on my piece, but uh, that's my pattern for Maggie's uh, platform. And I know it's large, but you know, the dog should have some comfort. This is a nice big car. So uh, I wanna make sure Maggie has some room to spread out. Uh, I am now going to basically cut this out of plywood and uh, I am going to give it, um, some sides, I'm gonna give it some uh, some risers here, probably about maybe two inches. And then I'm also going to cover it in padding. Uh, some, I think I have some sheepskin. Um, yeah, so we're gonna make it a really cushioned, comforting place. The best part is there's a cup holder in the car I only just discovered right back here for the third row of seats. And that's where we can place her water so she can have access to water. 
Yeah, she's a practice road trip dog. She likes drinking from water sitting in a cup holder. But in this particular car, the cup holder's too low. So I was really glad that there's one adjacent to her platform. Uh, I'm gonna have a riser back here that keeps it level. And um, we'll be able to test that riser and make sure its measurement is exact. This is a, this is a quickie, but I'm, I'm really kind of excited about it. All right, here we go. Okay, uh, I've been test fitting and going back and forth to the car and this is the dog platform for my SUV. I am now going to start to build the walls for it and I'm going to get those walls to match these curves using something called kerfing. I've done that before and I'm gonna do it again. Oh, someone's at the door. So what is kerfing? Kerfing is the process of taking something that doesn't bend very well, like a piece of wood like this, and making slices in it until it does make a bend. I've used this for some builds before. Um, it's a terrific technique for building, uh, for building walls that are not square. Um, and I'm going to be using my table saw sled. You will notice that my table saw sled is brand new, and that's because I rebuilt it but there's no one day build for it because I built it off camera because that sometimes happens. And I apologize. I felt bad the whole time I was making that sled without filming it. And yet, that's, that's what happened. Uh, so, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a wall a certain height, which is, I guess, about that high. And that height is probably, what, an inch and a half, inch and three quarters, inch and three quarters, I think. Uh, so I'm gonna cut a bunch of strip inch and three quarters, <clears throat> and then uh, I'm gonna staple in the flat parts of this strip where I can. Actually, there's only one straight, perfect straight piece. Everything else kind of has a, a bend in it. And then I am going to, well, I'll walk you through the process, but like when I have a bend like this here, I'm gonna kerf on the inside there and on the outside there to get it to match that curve. And, uh, this should be pretty cool. I have mapped out the first set of curves and they go from here, across here, and around here. And I've mapped that out on this piece of plywood, which will be the border. So I've got curve, straight, curve, straight, curve, and if I don't get my curves exactly right, I can add little slices. I also have to keep in mind which curves are inside curves and which, which curves are outside curves. Yeah, it's a bunch of stuff to, to keep track of, uh, but it's not too complicated. So um, yeah, it's time to start making some notches. Why not notches? Let's start here. Oh, frack. Ah, all right, I didn't curve it enough. So it's gotta be this, it's gotta be this guy, right? Yeah, and this one is still usable, and so I am going to use it. Bring this up to that. It's right there, great. Nice. Awesome. 
Great. Great, that's pretty solid. Okay, so now I need to remeasure this and come around from here to here. I should admit I'm having a little more trouble with my curves than I expected to have, and that's because every plywood responds a little differently to how you want to bend it. Oh, this, that's, yeah, that's no good. At any rate, um, it's taking some problem solving. I'm having to move curve by curve, but here I have an inside and an outside curve, 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 that are uh, next to each other. So here we're gonna try and get this going. Actually, I think we're going back to the time lapse. It's gonna take a while. All right, time to stop throwing good money after bad. I've screwed up these curves enough. This plywood just doesn't like being bent on a curve. I got that one, I got two curves going and they're both, nah. So, I'm going to straight lines now. Yeah. All right, here we are. Here is the finished dog platform. And now, it's time to cover it. I'm gonna make the, the, the two inch standoff a little bit later. Oh, but right now, it's time to cover this thing. All right, well, I happen to have this awesome uh, sheepskin dog bed, which should be really comfy. It's one of Mag Maggie's favorite places to lie down. And it is exactly the right length, which is awesome. So I'm gonna staple it in all the way around the inside uh, using, my new air-powered T50 stapler. This takes standard, like, standard T50 staples. I didn't even know that they made the No safety on the air-powered stapler, so be careful about the business end there. Um, I'm gonna staple this in all the way around, trim it down, wrap it over, and hell's bells, Margaret, we should be done. Nice, you can quite, you can hear the difference to when you've got a staple in there and when you don't. It doesn't stop firing, so it doesn't have a safety that stops it from attempting to fire. Let's uh, get back down in there. Now, I know that what I'm doing here, I've said not to do, which is to put my hand on one side of a staple and a staple on the other. The fact is I know I have half inch plywood and I have three eighths inch T50 staples and they're not going in with a tremendous amount of force. So I feel relatively safe about that. And uh, I stand by that decision. So uh, we're just uh, doing all the last buttoning now, but I feel like this looks like a very happy dog platform. Okay, so uh, let's take care of any nubbins that are sharp. Excellent. Great. You can't even see how good it is from here, but it fits beautifully. I am going to attach, yeah, I'm gonna attach the riser on it. And I think the next thing we'll get to see is how Maggie likes it. Yeah! Uh, sometimes on a build like this, uh, 
I may complete it all within a day and then try it out. And what happened on this build, which I'm about to admit, is that I completed it and we tried it out for actually about four weeks. Uh, and we got to really notice some of uh, Maggie's patterns in the car and what she prefers. And so I'm about to add the final dressing to Maggie's dog bed now. I know for you, it was just a cut, but for me, it was like a whole month and Gunther's been waiting on this footage. Sorry, Gunther. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is uh, Maggie likes this surface. She's very pleased with how comfortable it is. That's awesome. I'll get some little burrs there. Um, but uh, it's clear that she likes beds that have high sides, so a little bit of a bolster around. So I've cut some open cell foam here on my bandsaw, and I've got some, some artificial fleece, which should actually be nice and durable. This is like car seat covering. It's pretty inexpensive. I bought it on Amazon. Um, actually, when I was researching Kay's jacket fleece from 2049, um, I ended up with a bunch of extra. So this will be a really nice bolster. We're gonna use staple it in using half inch or 916 T50 uh, staples and my T50 air powered staple gun, which is so awesome. Yeah. change this fabric that I had pulled out. This is actually not from my K coat. This is actually Totoro. This is actually old Totoro fabric. Um, and it's, I, I don't have enough of it. I was just realizing as I was trying to staple this all the way around, I don't possess enough. So I've got a bunch of this. This stuff is also synthetic. I got a lot more of it. I'm gonna give Maggie a bolster of that stuff. My bolster is on. I vacuumed it up. It's now a very nice and protected platform. Let's put it in the car. Yeah, I think that's the next thing. Oh, oh, such a perfect fit, right? Look at that. That's great. I'm gonna hold on to it with a bungee cord on both sides. One there and one there. All right, yeah, that's pretty darn good. Uh, I think we need a better camera position to see Maggie. So let me find, figure that out. Yeah, good girl, good girl, good girl, yeah. She doesn't know what's actually going on. She's wondering, <laughs> are we going on a walk? Am I being punished? What's going on? <clears throat> All right, I'll put on a little extra padding because every dog could use a little extra padding. These sheepskin uh, uh, carpets from, I'm sorry. I'm sticking my head out in the world, so I had a mask on. These sheepskin carpets are just, Maggie loves lying down on them. We have them all over the house. Mm -hmm. Got a nice little persuasion here, yes. Oh, oh, sweet girl, sweet girl. Thank you guys for joining me for this one day build. Maggie, you wanna go for a drive? I'll see you next time. Bye. Hey everyone, Adam Savage here in my cave. And we are living through a completely strange moment in time. Six months ago, the entire world changed. Everyone went into lockdown and so did Tested. We became a virtual workplace almost overnight. And now I see all my colleagues almost exclusively on video chat. Um, I am shooting only on the phone. I know the sound quality has gotten worse. Norm, Joey, and Gunther are all editing from home. And maybe the biggest change is output. We have radically increased the number of videos that we make because 
Well, that's what I'm doing all week long here is just shooting everything on my phone. And eventually the world will return to normal, but one of the things we wanna keep up is the pace of videos that we've been releasing. We've been ecstatic about your feedback about this and we wanna keep it going, but in order to, we need to ask for your direct support. And so I'm here today to announce Tested Channel Membership. If you're not interested in becoming a member, that's fine. Tested is not going to change for you. You still get all the same great one-day builds, tool tips, the podcast, et cetera. But if you are willing to join, we've got some pretty cool extras and two levels at which to join. For $1.99 a month, we have our supporter level. And for $9.99 a month, our patron level, which includes all the stuff from the supporter level and some live streams, some direct access to me and the tested team and some sneak peeks into our entire tested workflow and process. We are so excited about the new possibilities that channel membership opens up. And we know that many of you have been supporting us all along as tested premium members. And to you, I say thank you. Your support has meant everything. And you can keep it going by hitting our brand new join button somewhere on this screen. Thank you guys for watching. And between you and me, I am most excited by the live streams. I really loved doing those earlier this summer and I can't wait to pick it up again. Thank <laughs> you.